And I think biological farming is the only farming system that has really rules. We want to deal with the minerals. We want to deal with the physical bio, uh, structures of the soil. And that doesn't mean just no-till. That means tillage with a purpose. And then we want to deal with the biology, to create an ideal home and feed them. See, I think when you get your soil full of roots, it becomes a a breathing biological tube. And we want our soils to look like a chocolate cake. They gotta be loose and crumbly. So I don't need to measure soil health. I can see and smell that. I need to measure the minerals. And once I got a mineral plan, about every three to five years, we check on our minerals and see if we need to tweak this system. Hmm. How do you add the minerals to your compost? And when do you do that? Right now, our farm is organic. We're the extreme ones. We sell our corn from our farm to Phil's Organic Eggs. It's 10 miles from our farm. And we get all, so we only use organic inputs. And see, a lot of these organic farmers are using conventional manure. I helped write the organic rules back in the 90s. The, the big farms weren't there. The GMOs weren't there. The, now, the, I don't think it would have got approved if we did it today. So we only use organic manure. So I get the poultry manure from a laying hen operation. And then we got, uh, uh, we've had some cattle, we got bedding pack manure, we got some hay and some things that we use on our own farm and put that manure in it. So in the beginning, if I needed uh, calcium, sulfur, I always start with calcium, sulfur, and, and, and phosphorus, calcium and phosphorus, really. And we might put gypsum in that pile and rock phosphate. I can put those in on day one. You see, now everybody says rock phosphate is insoluble. See, I want to get my minerals in a carbon biological cycle. Where in the compost policy, then the biology is breaking them down there in that carbon biological cycle. If I'm putting on all those cover crops and we remineralize the soil, the minerals are in that cover crop. So I got my minerals not just dumped on the land, but they're always in the carbon biological cycle. So, so rock phosphate is fairly insoluble unless you got a really biological active soil, but putting it in the compost pile and let the bugs breaking it down and digesting it. And then if I need to add, like now we're, we also add boron. Boron is really critical for sugar translocations, calcium uptake. And so boron and sulfur, we add later. And if I needed to add trace minerals things, I'd add it later in the process. So later in the process, the comp later in the composting uh, process? Yeah, we'll start in May with the compost and then we'll turn it. We're not, we're not, we don't win awards for making compost. We got a farm to run. So we get the windows laid out and then start planting our corn and doing our cultivating and doing all those things and then come. July, when the cultivating is all, then we'll go in there and we turn it with a big payloader. Okay. And we'll start mixing things in and then we'll turn it throughout July. And then in about the middle of August, we'll add the sulfur and the boron and other trace metals like copper and zinc. I will, whether they interfere with the, the digestion, I don't really know, but there's no sense of interfering with that. So then we, and about a, in September, then we keep, we turn it maybe once a week with this payloader. And part of the purpose is uh, we want to make sure there's no weed seeds in it. We want to make sure that, that we don't get, the pathogens are digest in it. So we, we make sure it's heated to 160 degrees for a period of time. And then in September, we'll go out. We got a large spreader that holds a lot and it'll spread a, a ton to the acre. We put on up to, on the new land, we put up to five to six tons per acre of the compost once we to get it going. And if we need other minerals like lime or we need other things, a potassium source, we'll blend that up and spread that on the land. I don't put the potassium necessarily in the compost pile. So Gary, um, we don't hear... I don't think we hear a lot of talk about minerals necessarily in the biological uh, regenerative organic right. movement. And so tell us more about that. How did you, how did you know to look there? I think because way back in the seventies, I was teaching at the tech school and I had these farmers do on-farm projects. And one of the students put on some calcium and some sulfur and a, a mix of boron and the feed test changed. And in 1976, we had a major drought. And the farmers in southeastern Minnesota were buying hay from out west. And the farmer would say to me, this hay feeds different. There's something about this hay that my cows like. So I started digging and testing. And when we did those studies on the farm, I can change this mineralization. All of a sudden, this calcium level is coming. So I, calcium is, is the king and it's the trucker of all minerals. So if I don't put on a, a available soluble calcium, I can't get the mineral uptake. So we've demonstrated uh, huge uptakes of minerals on different plants. And that's what gets things healthy. Now we have to have a balance of those minerals. There's plenty of research on that. So just the hope that I got enough in my soil, I tell people, if you don't want to put on minerals, you better take on a piece of land where somebody put on too many minerals in the past, but on a lot of livestock we were in the past and it's over mineralized. And then I can tap into that resource. If you're just going to take a field that's not have that history in it, I, you got to, if you want to have healthy plants without disease and insects and at a highly in nutrition, what is nutrient dense foods mean? You got nutrients in it. A healthy plant requires minerals, and that is an imbalance of minerals and a high quality one. 
But calcium is the king of the driving force behind and boron. And I say calcium is a trucker of all minerals and boron is the steering wheel. Calcium is a trucker and boron is a steering wheel. So how do biology and minerals dance together and work together? I think because the plants, you know, the, the biology and the soil needs all these different minerals and things too. And I think the plant can take up what it can readily get out of a soil, but some things we do interfere with that. And if they're not there, everybody says, oh, we're going to, we're going to grow these cover crops and extract from the soil. Well, if they're not in there to begin with, or they're so highly tied up, you're not going to get them. So we want to prime that pump with available mineral sources. And that's why we take the soil test, but we put a balance of all those minerals on. And, and I like to get my minerals, like I said, in carbon biological cycles, I can put a manure on a soil, but if I do, I want to make sure I grow oats. Oats and buckwheat are two very unique plants in the fact that they got very acidic roots and they will pill minerals from a soil where no other plant can. That's why they grow on low fertility ground. We see what kind of minerals. And so, so mineralization has a lot to do with the health of a plant. Now I was in, I gravel, I was in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, Amish country, and the dairy barns are sitting empty. Dairy, dairy farming has really gone south. It's not we, we got out of it too. There's no, whether people don't drink as much milk, but I think it's that the big boys just took over and, and fled the market with poor quality food. Mm -hmm. But Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, now they grow vegetables. The land's $30,000 an acre. It's pretty hard to make a living milking cows. They got hoops and tunnels. And what we've learned in the last 30 years of doing this thing, we can grow pristine, beautiful looking vegetables and crops and tomatoes. They don't have to be all blemished. And that takes healthy soils and healthy plants. And then they do grow healthy produce. And those guys said, the produce that we grew 20 years ago as an organic farm isn't the same produce we're growing today. And that's still organic and clean. And you know, they might foliar and put some stuff through the drip, but it's really a mineralization biological project. Really? And so, um, I'm just going to back up. So you're doing a mineral soil test. Are you doing any other soil testing for organic matter or biology or anything like that? On that test, there'd be a mineral. I've done a lot of testing and I've done like the, the soil health test. We cannot find out. Taking the soil health test does not give us a direction on how to fix things. It tells us maybe what's not working mm. and it doesn't even tell us what we need to add. But I went, there's a John Lundgren ectasis. It's spelled, but I, don't, I can't pronounce this, E-C-D-Y-S-I-S. And they're in South Dakota. It's a thousand acre project. We joined them. It's the first time anybody took a soil sample on my farm that represents what we see. They came back and what they see, the first thing is water infiltration. If the soil is like a chocolate cake and you pour water, so our farm, the numbers are off the charts. And then they talked about the carbon to nitrogen ratio. We grow all that clover, all those cover crops. Our nitrogen to carbon ratio is really, we got really, we got a really good ratio. And so do we have a bacteria to fungal ratios are really good. And then they came back and said, we have a high level of biomass. We grow all those cover crops. Anywhere else they sell a test, send a test. They don't show us that kind of thing. So it was the first indication that uh, there was a comparison of all these other farms that our farm looked really good. But if you come to our farm, you don't have to have a test to see biology. You can take a bucket of water and throw it on the ground and you'll see it'll soak in. And you'll see that we are all these cover crops, a massive amount of earthworms and root and roots into the soil. Very cool. And what levels of minerals are we aiming for? Or is well, it depends on what we're growing? Yeah, so now we're, see, then everybody's talking about nutrient density. I've been pushing something really hard, and I do realize that someday it'd be nice to be able to have an app on your phone where you go to the grocery store and you can hold it over produce and measure pesticide residues, and you can measure nutritional value. Well, there's 4,000 different compounds. I spent hundreds and thousands of dollars trying to test things. So I got it down, but we came out. There's four minerals that are indicator minerals. If you take a, I don't take a broccoli. Because I actually, because we're dairy people, we're Dairyland Lab in Wisconsin. It's a dairy testing line for $45. I can get a complete mineral analysis of any kind of plant, including broccoli, spinach, and cabbage. And I sent in some, I went to the grocery store and I picked some produce. I went to a really good organic farm and I took produce. And I went to a do nothing organic farm and took produce. And I sent them in the Dairyland Lab and I put a little note, this is not your lunch, just test them like you would dairy feed. A human test on that stuff, the test for human food would be seven to eight, seven, four to $700. These are $45 tests. And of course, I said, if the test picked out produce in the store, actually now you got to be careful. Was a little, the guy that do nothing organic, his was on the bottom of the pile. And I'll guarantee he changed how he farms. And the guy that's really good at organic, I said, that's when they get these tools developed. I said, I will give you farms that are really successful doing a good job. If your tool does not 
measure that, then it's kind of useless. So the four minerals, we call them the big four. And now it was being presented. Acres USA is the one that published my books. And I'm writing another article about these big four minerals. And that's not necessarily in the soil. It's getting them into the plant. And so the, whatever plant you grow, let's say it's broccoli. Alfalfa was a big thing for our dairy people. We want to have calcium levels really high. Phosphorus, you know, everybody hears another. I get all these things that people, oh, phosphorus is the bad guy and phosphorus is in our streams. It doesn't leach, it erodes. It's a soil structure problem that we have phosphorus in our water. And the reason we're attacking phosphorus is because it's the easiest to measure. Phosphorus is energy translocation. Phosphorus is energy in plants. Phosphorus is totally essential for healthy crops. We have demonstrated on our farm that we can get 50% increase in phosphorus. So I look at any farm and any kind of a feed, I get high calcium, high phosphorus, high magnesium and magnesium might be high in your soil but i did my graduate work on sulfur and methionine sulfur containing amino acids if we can get i have to add sulfur to get magnesium uptake so magnesium getting into a land that's photosynthesis that's the middle of the core press that's what that's the center of all photosynthetic activity you want to get more energy and sugars produced i got to have magnesium and so the last one on there's boron so if i take a tissue test of a plant tests of any plant and they're high in calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and boron, I can tell you how you farm. So those are the indicator minerals I think that we need to, we can't measure all 700, 7,000 compounds with, you know, there's all kinds of other things in it. I can, if those are high, generally the plant is healthy, high producing, and the bugs and diseases aren't wiping it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Gary, does, if you have the right biology and you're not using minerals, does that make those minerals available, bioavailable to the plants or? I, not, I have not seen that. You know, if I, and I get, you see, land and in land sitting idle. So this CRP, these government programs are land sitting idle for, we took on a piece of land that was actually planted pine trees and it was idle for 25 years. <laughs> what, how it looked when it went in 25 years ago is how it looks when it comes out 25 years ago. Nothing gets fixed by leaving it alone. Nothing gets fixed. The plants that are growing there are growing, are tolerating the conditions that are there. They don't change the conditions. See, the plants determine the biology. And of course, if there are not many minerals there and the plant is growing based on the conditions that are there, it's not going to necessarily fix it. And the minerals aren't there. Like we're in a part of the country. There's no, there's no boron in the soils up here. There's no selenium in these soils up here. 